In nature, death is a natural part of any life. But why is that so? If a tree dies in a forest, a new tree will take its place. But that one has to grow from a tiny, tiny seed. So wouldn't it be more efficient to just keep the one that was already there? My favorite thing about forests might just be the smell. And they've all got such distinct smells as well. Like a conifer's forest will smell differently from a forest with just regular leaves in it. But I think also the color. I mean, it's something by being surrounded by green that just makes you so calm. Plants create the sustenance they need to grow through a chemical process called photosynthesis. During this process, water and carbon dioxide is converted into sugar and oxygen using energy from the sun. This happens inside the plant cell, inside a special compartment called the chloroplast, and every cell is full of these. The chloroplasts have pigments that absorb sunlight. The pigments can't absorb all light, so plants have specialized mostly on red and blue while neglecting green. This means they absorb almost all light except green, which bounces back into the environment, making the plants appear green. A key part of any tree life cycle is the loss of its leaves. But why do they fall off? And why do they change color? This is mostly about nitrogen and chloroplasts, which is the compartment of the plant cell that does photosynthesis. The nutrient most plants struggle to get enough of is nitrogen, making it very precious. And since the chloroplasts are the basis of life in the plant kingdom, it is of high importance. Leaves are not very likely to make it through a winter, making it a gamble with something you can't afford to lose. So instead, the tree will draw out the nitrogen from the leaves and break down the chlorophyll for storage and draw that out too. The chloroplasts are green, so when the leaf loses these, it loses its green color as well. But there's still plenty of other stuff inside it with other colors. What's left inside the leaf decides if it turns red, yellow, purple or something in between. Succession is nature's journey from an unstable ecosystem, or a non-existent one, to a stable ecosystem. And it's happening everywhere, all the time. So, plants need soil to survive. Soil is a mixture of grains of sand, rocks and hummus. Hummus, in a biological sense, is decayed organic matter, such as dead plants, fungi, insects, animals, etc. Hummus accumulation first happens during succession. First comes the plants with low requirements for nutrients and surface, such as moss. Moss and lichens are the start of everything. Now other plants can sprout in this moist moss, but these are usually short-lived. And when that moss is covered with dead plants, it too will die. But the death of the moss and the pioneer plants lead to more hummus, meaning that more long-lived plants can grow. What makes the rings of the tree is how fast the tree grows throughout the year. In spring, the tree needs to quickly produce new cells to get water up to the leaves. Because these cells were built quickly, they will have a brighter color. As summer comes along, the tree will take its time making the xylem because it needs to be strong as it will make up most of the tree trunk. Because of this, not only can we see how many summers the tree has lived through, but we can also see how wet the seasons were. If the rings are really thin, it was dry, and if the rings are really thick, it was wet. <laughs> Scientists have used this to see how the climate was in the past, mapping the weather pretty far back in time. Sometimes nature itself can interfere unexpectedly, but these disturbances can lead to opportunities in the plant kingdom. 
If lightning strikes a tree, splitting the bark to the ground and a branch falls off into some weeds, these weeds will have a tear in their surface. Just like humans, they can't regenerate their skin fast enough to keep stuff out, so they must choose a different path. And their path to recovery begins with death. The cells closest to the wound must die to create a barrier against the evils lurking outside. If they win, they live. And if they lose, bacteria and fungi are gonna have a good time until the plant is gone. But the plant isn't completely gone. The nutrients that built it up are still there and they can be reused by other plants to live longer and better lives. But what about the rest of the trees struck by lightning? Well, since the main transporting tissue is just inside the bark, we may see a strange phenomenon. As the tree is open to its surroundings, fungi spores are forced to attach to the core. And since the core consists of mostly dead cells, this fungi will eat up everything inside it, leaving the tree resembling a shell. The tree is less steady now, but it will still have green leaves and keep on living the best it can, while animals can seek shelter inside its trunk. The death of a tree can be beneficial for more organisms too. Insects can make their way inside the tree, where moths and beetles start their lives just inside the bark as larvae. Here, they eat the conductive tissue of the tree, so the cells transporting water and the cells transporting sugar from photosynthesis. Living behind bark sounds like the safest place to be, if it wasn't for the woodpecker. The woodpecker listens carefully and hears the larvae crawling around inside the bark and then it pecks until it can drag it out and either eat it or feed it to its chicks. And the hole the woodpecker just made in the tree? Well, fungi will invite itself in and eat as much as it can before the tree stops it by making a barrier of dead cells. So the opening of the bark led to larvae and then the woodpecker and then the fungi and in the end it created the perfect home for an owl. So plants are incredibly resilient, but they also have an amazing ability to adapt to changing situations, bringing life to the toughest environments. It's all part of the fascinating world of plants. It's also worth giving a quick shout out to fungi for breaking down dead stuff. Without it, we would be drowning in waste. <laughs>